Today's program. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us for our next um, installment in the Tips from the Expert Business Solution Series. Uh, this morning's program is sponsored by Pittsburgh Networks. Our topic for this morning is onboarding new employees or interns virtually, presented by Deb Gray, owner of the award-winning Pittsburgh West Office of Global Staffing Franchise, Express Employment Professionals. Hers is one of the largest and fastest growing of Express's Greater Pittsburgh offices, achieving circle of excellence status for the last nine years. Under Deb's leadership, her team has put 6,800 plus job seekers to work in a variety of fields, including administrative, professional, engineering, industrial, skilled labor, skilled trades, and skilled professional. Currently, Express Pittsburgh West serves over 150 working associates weekly and over 130 businesses in the Pittsburgh Airport Corridor and Beaver County. A Penn State University alumni, Deb graduated with a bachelor's degree in business management and honed her management and leadership skills over 30 years in the retail industry, guiding dozens of national teams in new store development and the re retrofitting of 1,100 retail outlets. In addition to her dedicated service to the board of directors for the Pittsburgh Airport Area Chamber, thank you, Deb. Deb also serves on the Penn State Business Management and Technology Board and the Pittsburgh Technical College Business Advisory Board. She's an active supporter of local educational institutions, as well as many business and community organizations, including the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce, the Beaver Valley Career and Technology Center, Germain Harbor, West Allegheny Library, and Professional Outfitters and Variety Shop Franklin Center. In 2016, Deb received the Helping Hands Award from Express Corporate, as well as a Distinguished Service Award from the Pittsburgh Airport Area Chamber. In 2017, she was honored with the Materials Award from Express Employment Professionals Corporate Headquarters for her work in the beta testing of the recently launched Express Jobs app. She also received the Sally Award from the Pittsburgh Airport Area Chamber in January of 2019. The Sally Award is presented annually to a chamber member who has demonstrated dedication to the chamber, much like the, the late Sally Haas, who served as the chamber's CEO and president from 1998 to 2012. Sally was an inspiration to all who knew, knew her as she worked tirelessly for the chamber and its members. Deb continues to lead a stellar team to serve businesses and job seekers in the Pittsburgh West and Beaver County regions. Her commitment to workforce development has also led her to enthusiastically utilize and present Express educational and career development tools such as Job Genius and Express Learn. Deb conducts workshops and presentations at businesses, educational institutions, and events to help drive workforce-related education, awareness, solutions, and opportunities for employers, employees, students, and families. Sounds like one very, very busy woman. So it is my pleasure to turn this over to Deb Gray. Deb? Awesome. Welcome, Deb. Good morning. And we should be going. Are we there? We are. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Susan, very much. And thank you all, to all who have joined us this morning. As I think about this particular subject, and I prepared my notes, I actually took a little detour yesterday. Um, and there, there are just a couple things that I've had the pleasure of experience over the course of the last six months or so as Express supports us in our leadership sharing. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of listening to a, a, a gal by the name of Denise Van Eck, and I'm just going to just read this for a second because it's really a setup for is onboarding new employees or interns virtually different for us or is it the same? And is it the challenge of how we do it is really what we're dealing with. And Denise's subject for us yesterday, which was our Leadership Academy event, was COVID brain is a real thing. The amount of control we, used, we are used to feeling has truly been disrupted. Amidst the uncertainty, have you felt yourself teetering on the edge of threat and reward? What's going on in your brain can have a direct impact on your relationship, your work effectiveness, and the emotional buoyancy. So yesterday, we listened to Denise for an hour, and she talked about how to mentally prepare, how to overcome 
the disruption that has occurred for all of us these last, let's call it now, for many of us, we're pushing seven months. And simply this, that our brains learn habits. We teach ourselves habits. We know that it's X number of weeks to learn a habit. And with the onset of COVID, there was really very little preparation and our brains were disrupted. So the mapping that our brains work with was very disconcerting. Therefore, we have to find ways to fix that, change that. We have to deal with the uncertainty. And there are certain things that she shared yesterday that fit into the emphasis that I want to look at with you today about onboarding. And it truly might not be about a new employee. It may be literal just basic engagement and helping to keep our teams motivated. However, I'll stick to script because we wanted to have prepared series information and that's respectful of the individuals who are here with us today. Are we fearful? Are we curious for some of the things that Denise talked to us about? And how do we focus when we have all these disruptions? Of course, she talked about the messiness of what we're dealing with. And then she, then she talked about um, the um, overcoming that with mindfulness exercises, et cetera. So there's all kinds of things that I heard yesterday that I would love the, for each of you to have the benefit. And there are other speakers that we've heard through the course of the seven months that I'll interject a few things as well. So we're gonna move to topic a minute here. Um, and I'm going to make sure that everything's working here. And okay, so in the, here we go. So our outcomes for today. Really, I don't want to focus on the what so much of onboarding. Though I'll give you some of that at the at the end of this roughly 30 minutes. I want to focus on the how. I want to focus on the why. The why to me is the biggest challenge that we all deal with. If it's onboarding and recognizing that onboarding is different than orientation. We hire an individual, we bring them into our workplace, we provide them understanding of who we are, and the onboarding continues for a very, very, very long period of time. If in fact, we have an individual who is sitting in a remote work location. Have we literally recognized, and let's use Denise's thought for a minute, the fear of the curiosity, but have we recognized the negative impact that could occur if we do not onboard correctly? So part of that as leaders is, is us being in, introspective. And what are our commitments after we've invested the search process the interview process, the selection process, and, and literally agreeing with that individual that you're bringing them into your workplace. Once you agree on that, have we committed to the best process, the best learning, and to overuse the word onboarding for a minute? Are we setting expectations? Are we setting expectations for transfer of knowledge? Do we recognize the gaps that can occur because they are remote working? The things that we experienced, perhaps with little preparation in our world, it was March. It was a Thursday night in March. That was 18, 19, 20, if I remember correctly. And we literally got word on Mar Monday, Thursday afternoon. We were packing up this office and we were going home. And we found ourselves challenged with technology, with the fear of the unknown, and how we were going to service. At that time, it was approximately 60 clients and 130 associates that we were servicing. So are we setting expectations for that individual or individuals or many individuals, depending upon your situation? Are we being more intentional? How? Do we define and help 
the newbies understand our culture? How do we help them with the learning curve of the mission, vision, value? I'm going to assume that we selected them, they selected us because there was a match. So often it is not all about the technological skills and competencies that an individual brings. It's tr truly more about the cultural fit. I want to work here because this is what you do. I want to work here because you can afford me an opportunity. I can provide you this. So it is a mutual agreement of where we're going. What are our commitments? So that again, repeating just a tad, the setting of expectations, but really, do we recognize the missteps that can occur? Are we as individuals, as leaders, as managers, as owners of either the process or the helping of pe people in our business transparent enough? Can we acknowledge the mistakes that we've made? It might be literal, or it may be something that just fell out of the sky because something happened, an announcement that now the occupancy has changed. We've dealt with that now for six, seven months. So acknowledging being transparent, most of all as leaders, truly being self-aware of where we are, where that new individual is, where are the coworkers, the team members, the managers, the bosses, whomever that support network is with the individual who is coming into your company. And it may again apply to people who have been there for the long term. And again, I'll repeat, it may be about the engagement with all of the players in our organizations in a remote environment. So do you have a full-time, a part-time? Do you have a hybrid situation? There are certain words that we will never forget as we refer back to this period of time of COVID. The nine to five, we basically believe is a thing of the past. Do you have benefits that allow a flexible schedule? Acknowledging those parents that are working with children, homeschooling, or again, a hybrid school situation. Do you have a reserve a desk situation so that you do want an individual to come in? And is that helping the understanding of the, of the culture of your business, the, the, the service expectations, the uh, production expectations, the focus on activities to get results, and, and those uh, metrics, the KPIs that we give each of our workers in our businesses. Are we looking at the newbie in our organization as somebody, again, who we selected and they selected us, and encouraging everyone to stay connected and are we appreciating them through that learning curve just think back to the first time that you came into a new work situation did you have a work desk did you have a computer did your phone work did, could you even find the, the parking place i mean, remember some of the big sears buildings that i went into in my past life going into headquarters in chicago for the first time by the way it breaks my heart to have to talk about this stuff and, and the place isn't really there um, and not even knowing which door to go in. But there were people walking in that I could ask a question of, someone who helped you as you were entering that place. There was a face, hopefully a friendly face. If I'm working at home and I'm setting up, am I comfortable admitting when I do, do know how to log in and how to find passwords and how to get to websites or how to fix technical problems? Am I self-aware and am I willing to ask for help? So what gets lost when I'm working remotely? We lose that little bit of, this is how things are done around here. That water cooler conversation, that hallway conversation. And how do you make up with that or make up for that for individuals who don't have regular interaction. So the communication piece truly needs to be managed and customized. And then of course, 
the training and the actual onboarding for future development. So, are you in a situation where you will change or have changed? And have you changed with thoughtful approach? Or are you remaining the same in how you're onboarding? Have you literally looked in the mirror, taken the individual tasks and process of bringing a new worker into your company, into your team environment? And have you detailed what is different with somebody working from home? And have you looked at why you have to change it? And then the what they will learn and how they will apply it will come. If we focus on the why that they're there, we focus on the why for our company goals, the what and the how will come. So I have a little, another story that is a little bit of, uh, more about present, Oklahoma. Um, I was talking to um, Cheryl, our leader for, for Express um, lead, leaders, pardon me, Leadership Academy, and she was sharing that she selected a field team member to work in the corporate leadership team during these last couple months, and that it was a little bit more difficult to onboard Tracy when she lives in uh, Southern Atlanta, I believe, not positive. This individual was gonna work in Atlanta, but interact with the headquarters environment in Oklahoma. So Cheryl said, I truly had to step back and say, what do I need to do different to help Tracy feel comfortable with the Oklahoma world. Now, in our headquarters, we have people working in headquarters, we have people working remotely, and we have hybrid situations as well. So she had to step back and she'd sent an email to the team members introducing her. When you go into our building in Oklahoma, it is like going into a family environment. And she was trying to find a way to replicate remotely in this email introduction. These are your coworkers, these are the managers above you, these are the support people. Tracy needed help to be able, even though she knew Express, about those that she would need to interact with. So are we managing things proactively different versus staying the same? Are we looking at the relationship part so that I am comfortable communicating within an organization, your organization, your team, that will help the person focus on the true KPIs because they are not fearful of reaching out to navigate the technical learning, the competencies that have to come to make sure that I reach the metrics and the results that we all strive for to be productive businesses or productive contributors. The information that I've pulled from comes from a, um, uh, an article that says, employees start to think remote work isn't so great after all, and I know why. All right, this is written by an individual, Chelsea, who is head of a talent organization called Edemus. And this was a Wall Street Journal article from late July. And we really think about the fact that individuals can easily become engaged or they can become disengaged as fast. So I am excited, I have this opportunity, I've negotiated this and I did it even throughout what's going on. I actually um, lost two individuals since March and I've actually added two individuals since March I'll tell you a little bit about one of those individuals moving across country to join our business as well. But are we aware? Are we recognizing? So we have choices as leaders. We can do what we've always done, or we can literally dissect what we've done and develop a new way to onboard. Right this minute, Though we have some things opening up and we have a little bit more freedom as far as how many people can congregate and gather, we still really don't know when it will be 100% in order to keep everybody safe. 
that roller coaster ride, that fear is going to continue probably for a period of time, the foreseeable future for some businesses. So we can't wait. We have to help support individuals and look with them, work with them, and allow them to fail forward when we redesign our learning and how we want them to understand that mission, vision, value, our culture, how we want them to interact. What is the wow experience that they provide to your customers? Um, so are we supportive, but most importantly, have we changed our approach? So again, it really says that we spend an awful lot of time finding the right individuals, the right people to fit into our worlds, our business teams, but what's the most important factor when building your team? So we wanna set them up for, for success. We wanna collaborate. We want to have frequent communication. We probably have to have more intentional communication. And yes, we have to focus on a little bit of that. What is the primary business communication channel? In our world it is the use of teams. And this business series has provided um, some wonderful um, explanations of the various options that are out there and they will be on that the YouTube channel as well but is it Teams, is it Zoom, um, is it uh, the Google Doc sharing information, is it just simply a conference call but most importantly have I identified that I have to have a more frequent conversation because the challenge here is, is the relationship building is about finding a ways to help this individual, these new individuals, be a part of a team and keep the team the team. We did an exercise this past Monday and went out and scouted some of our territory in teams of two because we have not been able to do a true team meeting, which happens about quarterly in our business. So, how do we help reinforce that they're, they're part of the team and that we trust them when they are working remotely? We are working to build to trust for each of those new individuals. Um, have we shared not only the tactical productivity driven activities that we hired them to do, but have we found a way to share in our world, the wildly important goals, the strategic part, portion of where we have been, what has happened to us in seven months, and where we want to go. Are we letting them understand and take time to learn the big picture of the new company, all the while recognizing that we're responsible for helping them develop the talent that they brought to us so it is applicable and it's supportive and it's rewarding for you with the new hire. So the focus is extremely important as far as that relationship building. Leaders, do we take the time to look in the mirror? Do we know that it's our responsibility that if it's somebody that we're onboarding or if it's somebody that's been here before, they're working from home. They're working maybe alone, maybe with two or three children, maybe with a spouse in another room. Um, Susan cautioned me as, as I prepared that we had some background noise from my team meeting this morning because we were on a little bit be uh, before 9.30. Um, how do we support the individuals who are working remotely during the flipping pandemic? So, Are we consistent with the, 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 the development? Is it definitive? Have you taken it to the point of a checklist? Once again, are we setting expectations? Really the key to successful onboarding is planning. So what did you have before? How did you onboard an individual? How much of that translates to remote onboarding? 
how much of that has to be tweaked. If you assign a coach, a mentor, a peer, a buddy, do we allow those individuals time to work through that remotely or we have expectations to take somebody to lunch? Again, the lack of hallway conversations, the reinforcement for finding subject matter experts that will help interpret the things that I'm not hearing because I'm sitting in a cubicle next to somebody and I'm not overhearing conversations. The length of time it takes to problem solve in this world working remotely is hard. It's not the quickness of a conversation and said, all right, let's do this, 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 and this, and solve it. So it is our job as leaders to truly work to cultivate that understanding of why I'm here, where I fit in the scheme of things, and the KPIs, the metrics, and the things that you'll recognize and reward me for are needed, maybe more so remotely, than if I was sitting with a team of people and working side by side them. Am I clear? Am I consistent on my expectations? When I heard Sadie, she was in Minnesota. She was referred to me from a, by a team member on my team. She has some local ties based on her um, recent graduation and she had a desire to move here into the, into the Coriopolis area, Moon Township. So it was very different for me to navigate. Certainly we've done remote interviews. It's part of our, our, our business offering. But hiring her, helping her navigate a cross country move during this time. And I didn't help so much as support that cross country move and recognize that once she was here, she had a core group of people and she was much more insulated, it was very different for me than the individual that I hired who lived in Beaver County all his life. So the contrast between bringing Mike and Sadie was one extreme to another. Take a little detour for a minute and talk about the upskilling, if you will, the educational pieces leaders that we're responsible for. How do we help not only the new people on our team, but the incumbents stay current and stay competitive? So there's some statistics from our recent um, Job Insights report, which is our national survey through the Harris Poll, that literally says that some 85% could be left behind if we don't see that it is essential to provide career advancement and educational opportunities. Have we allowed that to be continue as a part of our priority is extremely important as we're navigating the fear or the unknowns of what COVID has brought us. We still have to find that continuity and we have to unscramble that messiness that we're dealing with, but continuing to provide educational opportunities. There are a lot of statistics, I don't have the actual numbers, but some of the younger generation that has joined the workplace most recently, it can easily, very quickly, very, very quickly get frustrated if we are not providing them all of that fast learning and that fast success that they're so used to. So how do you keep the new hires engaged in challenge of that they're there, why you hired them, what you hired them for, and how you help, which is just here because it's a reminder that we may be very diligent on having good health, safe practices in our business structure, our building, our offices, but have we also taken into consideration those interactions that are going in in the home place? And is that part of your checklist, your checklist as well? Um, there are 
there are a plethora of express resources that can help navigate all of these things, be they educational, be they upskilling, um, and certainly the resources provided by the chamber is another option. So where are we as leaders? If I'm onboarding or if I'm engaging, are they one and the same? They're a little more challenging for an individual who does not understand your mission, your vision, your value, who has not lived it, who is not interacting, who is not rubbing shoulders, who is not having conversations on a regular basis. So as a leader, as a, as a group of managers who are helping individuals learn a job and their tasks, are we helping them with the why that they're there? Are we helping them with the customer service experience? Are we finding ways to be intentional on better communication? Have we provided a, a coach, a mentor, a peer who gets it or is working to get it? Are we customizing? Can we find a way for consistent team communication, team recognition, team sharing, team fun? This morning, my team did an exercise taken of, of, of uh, the Sharks and they presented their best candidate that they needed to find a job for to, to their peers. And then there was a panel, including Mr. Wonderful, who voted and gave them some feedback on their elevator speech about their candidate. We have to interject different kinds of learnings. Is it a book club? Is it time off? What are the rewards that are being involved? As leaders, again, are we transparent and are we working truly, truly to trust? So here's the what, and I chose on purpose to leave this to the end. Is your onboarding extremely definitive that you have things identified, which certainly in today's world is about the technology, before they start, what happens on first day? What looks different for a remote worker it's not so much about the what, it's about the why. What looks different in week one, first month, or 90 days and beyond is about your interaction and your team's interaction with those workers who are working and are not there to understand and learn the dynamics and the cultural um, positives of your business. Thank you. How about questions? Thanks, Deb. All right, now would be the time. If you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A and um, we'll field those. We appreciate you all being here with us today. And thank you, Deb, that was good. Um, You're very welcome. Just a comment, I some of that is even I just see some of that valuable for employees in general, not just onboarding. Um, there's the challenge of onboarding, but even in these different times when people are working remotely to keep your employees engaged, there were some really good tips in there. So thank you for that. Thank you. Just to see if there are any questions here, I'll tell you another little story for a minute. One of the other speakers, um, we'll give them some time if they want to think about a question or, or Susan, I'll let you take that lead. Last week, I had the um, pleasure of listening to a, a, a gal by the name of Chris Heater. And Chris is a musher. Um, she uh, has led dog sled teams, and she uh, currently runs a wilderness um, trip, you know, uh, booking trips, et cetera. And, and she shared a, a, a couple things. One, she saw, started in her living room on her floor with the coffee table in front of her, with the dog on the sofa behind her. And she said, this is by design, this is on purpose. She says, the toughest thing that we're having to deal with right now is this screen thing and who we are and how we come across on the screen. And I'm here to tell you that I don't know what Summit, the dog, is gonna do. But it's who I am and it's how I'm going to convey my message. The fact that she is a musher and the dogs are part of her message certainly reinforced it a little bit. 
And of course, throughout the course of her hour with us, the dog got up and the dog sat in her lap and sat in her notes. And she just kept challenging us to be real as leaders. The second story that she told us is that she called one of her vendors, business partners, and she heard this message. Hi, this is Jim and, Jim and, and Ellen. Our kids took our phones, they turned off our TVs, we don't have our computers, the four children need us for this week, we'll catch up with you in a week's time, thank you. All right, and they left a voicemail for their business as co-owners that was down to earth and real about who they are. And Chris said, it made me call three of my friends and say, you gotta call, you gotta listen to this, et cetera that if we don't recognize that we're the first ones that have to own up to the uncomfortableness and the craziness and the, and the, and the messiness that's going on, we really can't help our team. So there were just, it, there, she had so many good stories. Um, so if there aren't questions, I get there, it. There actually is a question. Okay. Um, how do you ease the return to the office for remote workers? Well, I actually did that. So I'm gonna speak from, from my personal experience. But however, we're still in a hybrid situation because I'm supporting um, my workers who have uh, children that are homeschooling. So um, I think the specifics are that is that you look at what your physical layout is and are you prepared? Do you have checklists and are you following COVID rules? And there are some things in the Chamber Series early on, I think it was one of our first business ones that address the safeness of your work environment. Are you ready? Do you have a process that you've defined? And do you communicate to all people your expectations? In our world, it is don't break the rules of, of your health, personal health or those that you've been exposed to. And we check in and we clean three times a day in our office. So do you have a safe environment set up because your employees, your workers want to trust that you are ready to bring them back. Two, are you looking at schedule changes or is there a process that you have established in the past that needs to be tweaked? Are you bringing them back for part-time hours? Are you bringing them back half the team? What's, what's your communication style gonna be if part of the team is here and part of the team's remote? Um, three, ask them what their expectations are, most importantly. Listen to your workers and have conversations about your thoughts. Be transparent that you might not have all the answers. These are the things that you're considering. You don't have to bow down, roll over and say, oh, it's gonna be all your way, but you need to let them vent their concerns. Their concerns could be, I've gotta run and get a school off a bus. How are you dock me if I miss time? Are there gonna be modifications? So take it real to your world and prepare through good communication and good sharing of information. Great. Well, again, thank you, Deb, for being with us. And we thank um, Pittsburgh Networks for sponsoring this uh, business series um, on, our, on this virtual um, Tips from the Experts. Um, thank you to all of you who have joined in today. I hope you found some valuable information. Deb has her contact information there. You will be receiving, as a registered participant of this webinar, you will receive um, the PowerPoint so you can go back and review. And um, we are working to get all of our, uh, Deb mentioned our previous, we've been doing this since the end of August. So we're working on getting all of those recorded sessions up on our website so you can go back and review. Or if you've not seen them and you want to go back and reference those, um, you'll be able to do that as well. So um, again, I'm Susan Hovannik. I'm the member services manager here at the chamber and I'm here to help you. So if there is anything that you need or I can help you um, navigate through some things or point you in the right direction, um, please reach out to any of us here at the chamber. We're happy to do that for you. Join us Thank next you. Week. Oh. Go ahead. I apologize. I didn't mean to walk on you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, very much. And, and thank you for those who participated. Uh, thank you for our sponsor as well from, from me. I, I'm sorry, Susan. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. I just want to say join us next Wednesday, October 14th at 10 a.m. for our next Business Solutions webinar, where we'll be learning some new marketing ideas for your company in the COVID-19 era um, from 321 Blink. So um, again, have a great 
and uh, productive rest of your day. And thank you for joining us.